On today's program, we see how Jeremiah faced opposition for his messages of warning to Judah. But we also see a message of renewal and future salvation coming up next on Our Jewish Roots. In the sixth century BC, one man stood alone against the pervading wickedness of God's people in the land of Judah. The prophet Jeremiah was chosen by the Lord to warn of pending judgment that would come at the hands of the Babylonians. Visions of an exile left him heartbroken and in tears. But Jeremiah remained faithful to his calling and recorded a message that would speak to generations yet to come. Standing tall with faith in God, he understood better days were coming. And there was hope over the horizon. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'm David Hart. I'm Kirsten Hart. I am Jeffrey Seif. I don't like this theme today. It's not hope, but it's trouble that's going on. Trouble for the messenger. Yes. Yes, Poor trouble Jeremiah. for the world. It's not always easy, is it? Well, they, he's a priest, right? He's a, he's a Jewish priest, and they didn't like what he was saying. And, I mean, physical beatings, he went through a lot, didn't he? Well, it's, it's great to be a priest. It's, it's not good to be a priest when no one's involved in the religion. You know, it's kind of lonely if no one's coming to church. And uh, um, they're antagonistic toward him, not just dismissive. Right, and he was in stocks. They mm. threw him in a cistern. Yeah. Uh, and maybe it was like easier down in that cistern that he didn't have to deal with everything. He just kind of had some peace and quiet maybe. Yeah. I don't know. I'm to trying to look at the positive. Today people get mad at the preacher and just leave. There they got mad at the preacher and they really vented their fury on him. And that's what happens when you make the king mad. You know, if I offend a parishioner, well, I'm going to another church. But when you offend the king, <laughs> there are repercussions. And uh, he took on the powers to be. He was not afraid. We're going to hear more from you in a little bit, but right now, let's hear about that judgment on Judah. The warnings had come over many years. A seething pot poured out upon Judah, the shattering of a nation and its sinful leaders. The Lord had spoken clearly to Jeremiah, and it was then transcribed by Jeremiah's steadfast scribe, Baruch. It was a message that had been faithfully recorded but ignored by the faithless. Muglim. Bidiyuk mo siya amar Adonai. Baderech lebavel. Baruch, bechesed Adonai no nitzalnu. Azikim usru. Anu chayavim li yishayer kan. במצפה. הזמן שפה שהיינו פה היה בעבור סיבה טובה. הוא הביא אור לקירות החשוכים הללו. אך מלך יהודה, הוא נשאר בחושך. <חושך> אני הזהרתי אותו, אך הוא העדיף שעמנו יאמין בשקר. דבר האמת הושתק בכל רחבי הארץ. כה אמר אדוני, ואשיבותי את יהודה, ובניתים כבראשונה. כל ששון וכל שמחה. כל חתן וכל כלה. ויאמרו, הודו את אדוני צבאות, כי טוב, כי לעולם חסדו. What we call the book of Jeremiah really is a collection of documents. It's an anthology. A variety of Jeremiah texts are assembled together, not always in chronological order. And this has resulted in some confusion. The basic storyline, however, is rather simple. 
for quite some time the people of Judah have forsaken truth. Uh, deceit has run rampant, immorality, uh, all kinds of social and spiritual problems. Uh, truth was lacking entirely. Those that spoke the truth uh, were, were put to death. And Jeremiah was going to join their ranks in reasonably short order. Jeremiah envisioned that a judgment was going to come in the form of the Babylonians. He saw that. He didn't just see that. He saw after Acharemot, after the destruction, after the death, he saw Jerusalem coming alive again, teeming with new energy. But he's not remembered for that. He's not remembered for the hope. He was hated for speaking the truth. This was so much the case, if you look in chapter 38, uh, verse 4, we're told here the princes. And when I think of the princes, uh, the elites, those with power and money, uh, a variety of, of classes of people took on Jeremiah. The scribes, the writers, those who controlled the narrative, the history, uh, the princes, those who controlled government, uh, perhaps akin to senators today or legislators, I don't know. We're told here in chapter 38, verse 4, Vayomeru hasorim el hamelech, that the princes, these elites, said to the king, Yamatna et ha'ish hazeh, let this man be put to death. They really just didn't want him away with him because he challenged them. And to me, that's really striking because he was only guilty of telling the truth. Today, in so many ways, people that speak truth similarly are castigated, marginalized, silenced. My wife, who arguably is the sweetest woman in the world, will make a comment on Facebook, something about abortion, something about believing there's man and women and that's it. You know, in a world today, how many dozens of genders do we have now? And that's celebrated. And if, if someone just stands for, you know, just two biological genders, well, that that's just needs to be silenced. I mean, it, it, it's just so how bizarre it is. You know, everyone has a right to express themselves. Of course, everyone but a baby in the womb, they're not allowed to come out and live their life, but individuals can change their genders, their names, and all the rest, and all that is socially acceptable. To me, it just seems so upside down. You know, I'm not trying to point the finger or condemn, but it's just so upside down. Anybody that speaks truth, sense, all of a sudden invokes the ire of the powers that be. It's so much the case today, it was like that yesterday. Here they wanted to kill Jeremiah, eventually they will. What's going to happen, however, is they're not going to have their way at the first. Why is that? Well, our hero Jeremiah is going to be thrown in prison, yes, but he's going to be rescued. You know who's going to pull him out? The Babylonians. Jeremiah said that, that uh, you know, they wanted to live that way, the, the commonwealth was going to be destroyed, and they accused him of being disloyal, not a good citizen, threw him in a dungeon. What's going to happen is what he, what he said was going to happen. And when the Babylonians do overrun Judea, uh, they take the capital city, they fell the temple. Uh, it's the end of the commonwealth. Uh, Jeremiah is freed from prison by the Babylonians. And he's given the option to go where he wanted to go and do what he wanted to do. But you know what he did? And, and it really says something about the heart of the man. What had happened is, you know, everyone who was anyone was murdered, you know, or taken off into captivity. Uh, there's people scattered round about. And uh, after Babylonia uh, overruns Judea, they set up a puppet government. Gedaliah becomes the governor and, and people's, you know, humble people rallies together around him. Jeremiah wanted to join that lot. There's a kind of beauty into that. We're told, in fact, if you look in uh, chapter 40 of Jeremiah, Ravayeshev ito betocha'am. He dwelt with them, with the people. ha aretz, the people that were left in the land. And where did he dwell? In a place called Mitzpah. Striking to me that uh, Jeremiah loved the people. His heart was with the people. And he was so very grieved by the sins in the culture that eventually brought the culture down. He called it, he said it, it happened. But he said more than that, as we're going to see before we get out of this program, this man that saw doom, he also saw a new day dawning. 
as he prophetically gave voice to hope over the horizon. כמה בודדה העיר זאת, כמו אלמנה. פעם נסיכה, עתה עבד. אני בוכה, ירושלים בוכיה, דמעות מרות, ואין אף אחד לנחמך. חברייך בגדו בך. הם הפכו לאויבייך. ציון פורסת יד, אך אף אחד לא ינחמה, אף לא אחד. ירושלים הפכה למצוא רעת. probably the saddest book, small book. Uh, there are other books that have sad moments in them. To be sure, when I think of the Gospels, there's Calvary. That's a, that's a sad moment, uh, excruciating, you know, excrucious from the cross to, to see Jesus suffer like that. But you read through it, and before you know it, he's up out of the grave and, and, and preaching good news and bringing life to people. When I think of a book uh, in toto that's sad, certainly that's the book Lamentations. <laughs> It, it lives up to its name. Jeremiah wasn't thrilled to write it. Tragically, however, Jerusalem became an unclean thing. It had been that way for quite some time. You know, the Lord sent prophets to try and clean it up, but people just wouldn't turn. And so it was that judgment that was predicted came. And here, Jeremiah gives voice to it. I'm sure you know the story. Uh, siege was laid to Jerusalem by the Babylonians. Eventually the wall was breached. Uh, the armies entered, destroyed, toppled the city and the temple. The remains of that are still discernible today if you visit uh, uh, the Holy Land. This has happened on more than one occasion, I should say. Lamentations opens up with a, a, a word in poetry. It's so sad how lonely sits the city that was once full of people. Once it was teeming with life. And look, it's come to this. I've lived long enough where I've known young people. They were so spirited, so enthusiastic, so beautiful. But they, raid, they made all the wrong choices. They refused to return. Uh, and and they, they made a shipwreck of their life and it came to an inglorious end. end. That seems so much the case here, but it's not an end in total. You know, this prophet envisions a world beyond that, but that's not the moment here. Here he's grieving. He didn't want this to happen, but it did. And, you know, I should say, by the way, that in telling this story, uh, the reason why we opted to do it is because we think Jeremiah's world in very many ways is much like our own. Truth was lacking in, in his world and anyone who spoke it got beat up for it. You know, today, if you wanna believe there's just two genders, a man and a woman, well, you're gonna be punished for that. Everyone has a right to express themselves. You know, of course, if you wanna talk about a baby has a right to come out of room and express themselves, then you're gonna get in trouble for that. Uh, You know, if you believe that people should work for a living, then you're going to get in trouble for that. I mean, it, the world's upside down. I'll probably get bad mail just for what I said right here. But, but it, it's just a testimony to a strange time. And in Jeremiah's day, he spoke truth and, uh, you know, he, he, he paid the price for it. Those who speak the truth pay the price for it. We wanted to tell it, which is why we... did this series and those that support us financially do so because they want us to keep talking like this with an open Bible on the one hand and a willingness to confront the issues uh, of the day on the other. Now, Jeremiah here sees Jerusalem overrun and I don't want to see America collapse to be sure. And you don't either. We did a series not long ago, Faith of Our Fathers. We wanted to look at the Judeo-Christian 
um, foundations of our own culture, concerned as we were that people are rewriting all of that. You gotta go back and look at that series. You don't have to order it. If you wanna send us a donation for it, thank you. But you know, you just go to the website and it's all there just to see. We want you to see it. We want people to know the foundations, the origins to be sure, in order to not see happen in our world what happened in Jeremiah's. There he is. Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, collapsed. Once teeming with life, come to nothing. It's a sad story. Happily, that's not the end of the story, however, because as you'll see in a moment, he saw through the darkness, he cut through the clouds, he saw hope on the horizon. And we'll take a look at that in a moment. Our resource this week, the series Jeremiah, Hope Over the Horizon on DVD. The prophet Jeremiah was called to warn Judah that judgment was coming at the hands of the Babylonians. But we find woven through his writings is a message of hope and deliverance. These nine programs feature Bible teaching by Dr. Jeffrey Seif with special guest Dr. Michael Brown. Contact us and ask for the Jeremiah series on DVD. For many, a trip to the Holy Land is the dream of a lifetime. Where else can you go see the scriptures come alive as you visit the sites where so many biblical events happened? We invite you to come on a Zola tour in the spring or the fall as we explore Israel and Petra. Reserve your dream of a lifetime. Contact us for more information. You know, we always like to say, look what I've done look what I've written. I think it's good to extol what other people have done and written. I mention that because Dr. Michael Brown, who's with us on this series in Jeremiah, participated in writing a commentary on Jeremiah that's lauded all over the English-speaking world. We're so glad to bring him to you. We're game to put forth other people, not just me, not just the hearts. Uh, it's a we thing, not just a me thing. And I want to invite you into the we. That is to say, uh, we couldn't do it if you didn't help us to do it. Well, we flew Dr. Brown to be with us, paid him a little stipend. But we can't get away with a little stipend to bring all of this to you because it's very expensive. And I'm not complaining about the rent on the airways, but I just want you to know that I'm thankful that you help us to pay the rent to get on the airways, please. I believe there's a special blessing for those who are sacrificial. If you find blessing in what we're doing, please sow into it. And I know God will bless you for so doing. There's a principle you learn from the prophets of Israel. How real, how literal was the smiting? That's how real the healing is going to be. How literal, how real was the scattering? That's how real the regathering will come. First there is the pain, then there is the promise. First there is the death, then there is the resurrection. So just as Jeremiah graphically describes the destruction of Jerusalem, as he graphically says that old men will be killed laying in the streets, as he talks about women being raped, as he talks about children crying. It's a horrific picture. He prophesies it, but also he says that elderly will thrive in the time of restoration and children will dance in the streets and young women will be marrying again. Just as literal as the destruction, so literal will be the blessing. Look, we can go back through much of Israel's history and there's a lot of pain. There's a lot of hardship. There's a lot of difficulty. But it's out of the ashes of the pain that the glory comes. It's out of the ashes of the Holocaust that the modern state of Israel comes. And it's a principle for our own lives. Yeshua says, unless a grain of wheat falls in the ground and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. I hate the process of, of death, crucifixion, but we go through it and come out with something glorious. 
resurrection. First the pain, then the promise. The last teaching segment I had was a tough assignment. This one, I'm happy to land on it because this is full of such abundant good news coming from the same pen, from the same author. It's a fascinating story. If you look in uh, chapter 33, verse 11, oh, what does he say? Kol Shashon, the voice of joy, v'kol simcha, the voice of gladness, kol chatan, the voice of the groom, v'kol kala, the voice of the bride. He sees new life coming to Jerusalem. He who called it in advance and gave voice to the judgment that was coming similarly saw a restoration. Let's take a look at it in the book again in chapter 33 verse 7. Herein the prophet says, I will cause the captivity of Judah and of Israel to return and will build them as at the first to build back up again. I will cleanse them, he says in verse 8, of their iniquity. And I will pardon them of their iniquity, whereby they've transgressed. It's here in the literature, good news from ancient Jews. A whole nation can come to ruin, but it can come back to life. Who can do such a thing? God. And the God that could do it for them is the same God that can do it for you. You might hear a series like this that looks at sin and judgment for it and say, I know I had it coming, there you sit. Maybe it's a literal prison cell, you're watching this program. Maybe you're living in a jail cell of your own making. It's not an actual prison, but, but you're held captive. You, you, you feel the, the, the pang of conscience, guilt, the weight of judgment. It could very well be. Uh, the, the gospel story, however, is good news. Uh, you preach the bad news first, and that's what Jeremiah does. Uh, yes, there's bad news. Uh, there's a judgment for sin, but there's good news. You open up the book, you keep on reading, and you learn that, uh, uh, that there's a restoration. And how does that get accomplished in chapter 33, verse 15? He says, I will cause a shoot of righteousness to grow up unto David. You know, from David will come this branch of righteousness and he shall execute righteousness and justice in the land. In those days, Judah shall be saved. Hmm. When I open up the Newer Testament, I run into a story there of a personality who's introduced. It says the book of the genealogy of Jesus, the Messiah, son of Abraham son of David. Well, son of David first, son of Abraham. Here, this author gives voice to this Davidic personality who's going to emerge and affect a great salvation. Fascinating story, so amply fulfilled in Jesus. It's been fulfilled for me. You reach up to him and it can be fulfilled for you. And you too can see hope over the horizon. Our beautiful Messiah is so intricately woven throughout the entire Old, or should I say, First Testament, and we see him woven, should I say, through the book of Jeremiah. It's great to see threads of light in a tapestry of darkness, yes? It is, and uh, the love. I, I keep saying Jeremiah is this book of opposites. We have judgment, we have hope, we have exile, we have aliyah, we have a return. It's, it's opposites. We have old covenant, we have new covenant. It's all in this Old Testament book. You know, as a parent, you know, I, I raise kids, they've grown up. When I scolded them, it's not because I was disdainful, it's because I'm looking to improve the end result. It doesn't feel that way. I remember once my father said, Jeff, before he spanked me, this is going to hurt me more than it does you. I said, yeah, but not in the same place. <laughs> but the point is you do it. It's painful, but you're looking for it to produce something good. 
And uh, Jeremiah, to your point, sees the pain and he sees the gain. And he sees, he sees the future, he sees Messiah. And he gives us that picture and um, I just love it. Because I think so many people uh, that don't embrace the Jewish roots of their faith, look to the New Testament, it has red letter. Well, if it's red letter edition, that's what Jesus said. He's so in every book, in every prophet's mouth in the Old Testament, especially Jeremiah. I think this whole series is that someone who doesn't have that hope, that our prayer would be that today they would have that hope just like back in the day. And a lot of people don't. And uh, never mind the people, let's talk about a person, a person like you. If you're at a place in life where you're wondering about your place in life, you can feel abandoned by people and circumstance. You can feel abandoned by your own body that's not performing according to plan. And with all that, you can feel abandoned by God. Jeremiah felt that way. Jesus felt that way too. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? It isn't easy, but Jesus is talking to God about it. And uh, the Lord raised Jesus from the grave and he can raise you from your circumstances as well. Jeremiah saw that he could, didn't he? And he mentioned to the people, the nation of Israel, he wanted that God said, I want to give you hope and a future. And he also says to everyone today, to you, he wants to give you a hope. Yes. And he has a future plan for you. That's a, that's a powerful word Amen. in the book Amen. of Jeremiah. It is. Please don't give up, reach up. And as you go, Sha'alu Shalom Yerushalayim. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Join us right now for additional content that is only available on our social media sites, Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. Visit our website, levitt.com, for the current and past programs, the television schedule, tour information, and our free monthly newsletter, which is full of insightful articles and news commentary. View it online, or we can ship it directly to your mailbox every month. Also on our website is the online store, there, you can order this week's resource, or you can always give us a call at 1-800-WONDERS. Your donations to Our Jewish Roots help us to support these organizations as they bless Israel. Please remember we depend on tax-deductible donations from viewers like you.